This week on MC Rider, I'll show you how to use this to check and develop your clutch control skills. So if you've been keeping up with what's happening here on MC Rider, you'll know that I just returned from a road trip in Northwest Arkansas on my new Indian Challenger. And while I was in the area, I stayed one night in Eureka Springs. It's a really cool little town and worth a visit if you're riding in that area. One thing that is night and day difference between riding in Eureka Springs and Fort Worth, Texas is the elevation changes. Eureka Springs has some really steep roads through that downtown area. These roads are pretty tight in places with a lot of traffic and cars parked on the side of the road and a lot of pedestrians moving around. So slow speed skills are a must in situations like this. And that need is exaggerated when there's a steep incline. I often get questions from riders who have difficulty when riding in situations like this. But even if you live in the flatlands like I do here in Texas, there are some skills that you can work on and develop on any open parking lot, no matter how flat it is. So this week we'll head out to the parking lot, we'll work on some fundamentals of slow speed control, and we'll take a 2x4 as a tool for our final exam out on the parking lot. So we've talked a lot about the friction zone in previous videos. It's one of those fundamental skills that every rider needs to master, and it's not just for doing U-turns. Using the friction zone with the combination of the rear brake is how a rider can ride smoothly no matter what the terrain is, and without fear of rolling forwards or backwards on those steep inclines. The best way to get a feel for where the friction zone is on your motorcycle is to do a simple rocking exercise like this. So in this exercise, I'm keeping my head and eyes up. I'm releasing the clutch into the friction zone until the motorcycle pulls me slightly forward and then I'm squeezing the clutch and returning to the starting position. Not picking my feet up and I'm letting the motorcycle pull me forward with the clutch in the friction zone. I'm not taking steps, I'm just rocking back and forth, keeping both feet on the ground the whole time. Anytime you get on a motorcycle, one that's new to you especially, it might be a good idea to do this exercise and learn where that friction zone is on that particular motorcycle. All motorcycles are different and some motorcycles may have the friction zone further out in the travel of the clutch lever and some will be closer. This exercise will help you learn where it is on that particular motorcycle. After you get a feel for finding the friction zone, you can use it to pull you across the parking lot. For this exercise, and this one only, it's allowed to keep your feet on the ground as you're riding the motorcycle. In almost all situations, you want your feet up on the pegs, but for this one, we'll allow you to walk along with the motorcycle. So here, I'm just releasing the clutch into the friction zone. I'm keeping it in the friction zone, so I'm not continuing to release it out and I'm letting the motorcycle pull me forward as I walk along with it. So after you get used to that walking exercise, you're ready for the next step. That's putting your feet up on the pegs or the floorboards and adding a little rear brake and performing a slow ride. Again, my head and eyes are up. I'm looking across the parking lot, a little bit of throttle, clutch in the friction zone, and using a steady pressure on the rear brake, what's called dragging the rear brake. If you add a little rear brake, you'll be amazed at how much more controlled your motorcycle feels, how much more balanced it feels at slow speeds. Make sure you're not using the front brake. This is a rear brake only to help you control the balance and control of the motorcycle. Using the front brake in situations like this is one of the quickest ways I know of dropping the motorcycle. Your goal here is to ride at a steady walking pace. I was anywhere from two to five miles per hour as I was doing the slow race. So you practice all of these techniques until it becomes second nature. Some uses for these techniques out on the road are obviously doing U-turns, riding slow in traffic when traffic backs up on the roadway, and also controlling your motorcycle in really hilly situations like I was at in Eureka Springs. So once you have all of these techniques mastered, it's time for your final exam. You did bring that two by four, right? You'll need it for the final. So get your motorcycle in position with your rear tire up against the two by four, and then release the clutch into the friction zone, keeping your head and eyes up and both feet on the ground. If you're using the friction zone properly, you should be able to cross over the board with minimal movement of the board. If you do this though, you need to practice some more on your friction zone because you just failed your friction zone final exam. Remember that two by four is at the rear tire, your head and eyes are up, both feet on the ground, 
across the board without causing the board to fly out or move excessively under the rear tire. If you can do this repeatedly, you're well on your way to becoming a master of the friction zone. I hope you found this video and training exercises helpful. You know, there are many exercises like this in the field guide. Members get access to all of them. They also get the forums, access to a member map to find fellow MC rider members in their area that they can ride and practice with. You can get free months of membership, add free MC rider videos and MC rider merchandise. Just head over to mcrider.com slash member and sign up today. Till then, guys, it's Kevin with MC Rider. I hope to see you on the forums. If not, I'll see you on the road.